Advanced functions, 2.3 to 2.5. Whoa, Wade, what is Miss Havrat doing covering all these lessons in one? Well, frankly, they're very easy lessons. And when I teach the course, I, I kind of speed through it quite quickly because it's really, it gets repeated a lot as well later on in the textbook. At the end of each chapter, you'll probably find your teacher will do a lesson on rates of change. So, um... There's just some key concepts that I think we should run over. And I have a little practice rate of change quiz that I will try to find and post onto the PB Wiki site. But if not, I'll show you a blank version and you can pause and try it on your own. Okay, so the key points in the last 2.3 to 2.5 cover um, the things that we've talked about already. So average rate of change, remember, is the slope of a secant. If you remember that you'll have it nailed. The slope of secant. And remember that a secant would be something between two points. That is a secant. Okay, if I draw it right, right through and continue it, it becomes a secant line. So this from here to here is a secant for this curve. And if I extended it again, it would be a secant line. Now the instantaneous rate of change is the slope of a tangent. So that means I need to only touch this curve at one point, which of course is really hard to do when you're estimating. In calculus, you will know exactly how to find that rate of change at a very specific point. So this is the slope of a tangent. Okay, so if you look up the definition of a tangent, it'll say a line that touches a curve at one and only one point could be very specific. It could even, in calculus, you can find the slope of a tangent at x equals 2.305 if you want to, okay? Now the third little ditty they teach about is that if I draw a tangent to this curve, let's say I want to put it right here, I want to be right at this point on the curve, could be anywhere, but I want that one, and I draw the tangent line, you can see that the tangent line could actually cross the curve at another point. So tangents may cross at other points. Cross curve at another point. So you can imagine if I had like a quartic function with a whole bunch of ups and downs in it, that it could cross more than once. So it doesn't have to just be one point, could be two points, maybe even three, depending on your original function. Okay, now this one, this little part here becomes a little confusing for some people. It's important also for calculus that you understand what's happening. So it says, how does the speed change as time increases? Now remember, the speed is going to be the slope of a tangent line at a certain point in time. So remember I was talking about if you went to Toronto, it's kind of my favorite example. 400 kilometers, it took you four hours, you're going 100 kilometers an hour. How fast were you going at two o'clock? That's your instantaneous rate of change. On your car, it would be your speedometer, right? You look down. How fast was it going at two? Someone looks at your speedometer, you're going 140. Oh no, you're going to get a ticket. Okay, that's instantaneous rate of change. So how does speed change? So speed here, we're talking about the slope of the tangent line. So if you take a ruler, and this is the best way to do it, and you're going to be using it in calculus as well next semester, is that if you draw tangent lines to this curve, as I turn this little ruler, you can see that as I go from left to right, the speed would be increasing. So let's draw a couple of tangent lines. So there's one here, here's one here, and here's one here. So what you're describing here is the slope of the line. So this slope of the line, this one is higher than this one, right? It's steeper. So this is steeper slope, therefore increasing speed. So you start off really slowly and then you're going fast. So it's like driving through the city and then you hit the highway. Boom, you're going faster. So as time increases, that means going this way, reading left to right, we usually do that. So always in math, okay? So here you can see the speed was pretty fast. If 
But as you go from left to right, you can see now that the speed is decreasing. So speed is decreasing as time increases. Okay, let's take a look at these ones. So don't get confused by looking at these, like the curve itself. Think about the tangent lines. So as I'm here, whoa, that was a really steep curve, steep tangent line here. I like that, that's very steep. So as time goes by, the speed is, you should be able to say, decreasing. So speed decreases as time increases. And in the next one, you can see that the speed was pretty slow here, actually almost stopped. And then as we go this way, the lines, they're more negative. It doesn't matter. We're talking about the steepness. So this means the speed increases as time increases. So it's like throwing a ball up in the air. Remember the old parabola question? Threw the ball up in the air. It got to the top. So it slows down. Right? Why is it slowing down? Because the slope of the tangent line becomes less and less until it is zero. And then the ball starts to fall. So as we go around this side, you can see my tangent lines are getting steeper and steeper, which meant the ball was going faster. So if you ever played any um, sports involved rackets and balls, you know that at the maximum height of the ball, the ball is almost stopped. Okay, so the other thing you need to understand is if I have a tangent line like this, so right at this point here, the tangent line would have a slope of zero. So zero slope, and that occurs at both maximum and minimum values. So this is at a maximum because it's the highest point, and here this is a minimum value. Now, what you also need to understand is what's happening to the slopes of the tangents. Like, how would I know if I was at a max or a min? If I didn't have this graph and I only told you about the, um, the slopes as it approached this thing. So as I go this way, you can see, am I still on the page here? Boop, boop, boop. There we go. So here I have slopes that are positive, right? Positive slope. Positive slope to zero and then it's negative slope on the other side so if I go from positive slope positive slope zero negative negative slope that means this is a maximum and conversely on the other side let's do it in purple so right here, I have negative slope, right? See, it's going down. Negative slope to zero slope to positive slope. So it went from negative, zero, positive, then this is going to be a minimum. And that's kind of an important thing to know, and you're going to use that a lot in the next section when we do on polynomials, which is a lot more exciting, and also when you're doing calculus and sketching curves. So let's take a look at a little example, a little quiz um, I'll put up. Here's the first question here. So I'll see if I can find this and post it, but if not, you can pause the video right now and um, freeze it and try it on a piece of paper. And then I'm going to take it up. So if you're going to do it, pause now, and magic, here's the solution. Okay, so the question said a turtle is swimming directly toward shore. At t equals zero, it's 16.2 centimeters from the shore. See here, 16.2 centimeters. Um, at t equals six, it's 11.4 centimeters from the shore. t equals six, that's here, 11.4. The table below shows its position from the shoreline over six seconds. Determine the average rate of change of position with respect to time from 2 to 5 seconds. Now, remember what I said from 2 to 5? All you have to do is find the coordinates. So at 2 seconds, 
we have x is 2, y is minus 11.4. So it's a good idea to write up these coordinates 2 to 5. So 5 seconds, and then you'll know what to do with it too, 13.8. So then all you have to do is find the slope. How easy is that? So I have 13.8 minus minus 11.4. That's rise over run 5 over 2. And I said the average rate of change was 8.4 centimeters per second. Estimate the instantaneous rate of change of the turtle's position at 4 seconds. Now, I don't know how many students I've had that tried to make an equation out of this and then, you know, use a small interval. No, 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 no. If you have a table, you use a centered interval. That would be a good thing at 4 seconds. So all I can do is use 3 and 5. Or if I used a following interview, I would use, interval, I would use 4 and 5. Or a preceding interval, I would use 3 and 4. Now, if your teacher doesn't ask, the best one actually is the centered interval as we previously discussed. Okay, so in this example here, I used a following interval. So, and I think this one, I did a centered. So this is centered here. So if you did a centered you're smart. Centered interval. So remember, with a table of values, you don't have an equation. You can't use that really, really small interval that we talked about. You have to use what you have. Don't try to make an equation out of it. It's really kind of silly to do that. Okay, so um, this one I can show you. I use the following interval. So I use 13.8 minus 3 over 5 minus 4, and I got 10.8 centimeters per second. See the units? Very, very important. And when I did a centered interval, I also got, look, I didn't put the intervals, centimeters per second. Okay, let's look at question two. So again, if you want to try this on your own, you can stop right now, take a look at it, freeze frame, the distance of an airplane. The distance an airplane has flown in T hours is given by an equation, you have an equation, where S is the distance in kilometers between 0 and 5. Time is between 0 and 5. Determine the average rate of change in distance over the entire flight. And estimate the instantaneous rate of change in distance at exactly 2 hours. Look, use a 0 0.01 interval. Okay, so here's your solution. Hopefully you got it all right. So... I found two coordinates, see, 0 and 5. So I have 0, 0 and 5 and 32, 50. So I think if I were you, I would have written this, up, written this out. I didn't do it for my um, solution set. So I had 0, 0 and 5 and 32, 50. So rise over run, I'm subtracting zeros, and I get 650 kilometers per hour. That was a really long way to do it, wasn't it? You could have just done 5. And the second one says determine the instantaneous rate of change at 2 seconds using a 0 0.01 interval. Now don't worry about following or preceding. Do following. Just do the following interval because it's x and x plus h we're using here. Okay. So I did 2 and I found my y coordinate. I did 2.01. I found my y coordinate. And the instantaneous rate of change at 2 hours equals rise over run and I get approximately 672.1 kilometers per hour. Not sure what all this stuff is here. I guess that's showing all the decimals when I did it and I rounded it. Okay, so that's a good little practice for you. Um, chapter 3 will be much more exciting and more stimulating and challenging. All the best.